Coast Watch, Operation John goes after crayfish poachers in Napier. And the crayfish are going into the orange bin. These are undersized fish that were found amongst the commercial catch as well. Two boaties come to grief in the Waitemata Harbour. Mayday, we can you on the scene. Helicopter winch in process. And a Christmas patrol in the Marlborough Sounds nets fishers who don't stick to the rules. So what's your understanding of the law regarding possession of power and scuba gear? Up in Auckland, things are going horribly wrong for a couple of boaties on the Waitemata Harbour. We've had a report that uh, originally it was a mayday call that someone was taking on water. The call has transpired into the vessel has sunk. There are apparently two people in the water wearing life jackets. Uh, they originally said they were between uh, or off Ma Tia Tia Bay. Uh, it would appear now they're closer to uh, Motutapu Island. They can now currently talking on the cell phone, they can see the Westpac, but we still haven't had an update on their exact location. As Auckland Maritime Police Officers Craig and John search the area, another boat's come to the rescue. DR3, DR3, Coast Guard Radio, Channel 16. Yeah, go ahead. We've just received a phone call from a vessel on the water that has recovered the woman from the water. We're just getting details now, and we'll update you as soon as we have those details on us. The sinking boat's a long way from its first reported position, and as the Deodar heads for the area, the people who rescued the woman from the boat are now trying to get the man to safety. Yeah, after speaking to the vessel that is alongside, they are unable to recover the male. He is sitting on the hull of the upturned boat. The rescuing vessel has two many people on board to recover him on board. However, they are trying to affix a line to the vessel so that they do not lose contact with him over. As the people on the water struggle to keep in contact with the man on the upturned hull, the Westpac helicopter comes to the rescue. With the man on his way to hospital, the woman from the sunken boat can be transferred to a Coast Guard vessel. Mayday, Howard, Rescue 1, Coast Guard, Radio, go ahead. We are alongside uh, the assisting vessel. Uh, we have transferred um, one uh, patient over onto our vessel. Over. Roger, can you confirm male or female? Female. Howard from DR3. Howard from DR3, this is Howard, Rescue 1, over. Yeah, what's this woman's uh, condition, please? Uh, mild hypothermic, over. With everybody safe and the Coast Guard getting ready to tow the boat to shore, Craig makes contact with the people who pulled the woman from the water. These are our heroes. <laughs> can, can you tell us what, what, what did you see? Yeah, we thought they were divers or something like that, but we saw the woman like 15 metres away, Yeah. and he said, ah, oh, we just, the boat went down. So yeah, we asked him if he's, if he's all right, and he said, yeah, I'm all right. Get the life jacket and everything on. And we went to pick up the woman. So was she waving? No, no, no she, she was holding the purse and the phone. Yeah, she was holding the phone in one hand. So yeah. She was pretty calm, was she? Well, I think she was, she was in shock. Was shock man. She couldn't speak. Yeah. I'm pretty okay. sure that was the reason why she didn't wave. Yeah, she didn't say it work. We'll let you go and hope you have the ball. Get a few fish today. Hopefully. <laughs> well, you caught a couple of big fish. Yeah. <laughs> you have to throw them back though. <laughs> We've done our job today. Yeah. But I'm more than happy. Take care, guys. Yeah. Yeah. Later, Auckland police and Coast Guard try to save the boat of the rescued crew. Is that just dumping wash on the bow so it won't lift up? But next, Operation John is making progress in Napier. He's completely thumbed his nose at us and you guys. In Napier, Operation John is out to catch a commercial fisherman suspected of poaching crayfish. And a fisheries team is on the water, locating the suspect's pots, recording their GPS position and putting a marked crayfish in each. Male cray marked on the right hand leg. 
The team have put 23 crayfish in the suspect's pots, but before they return to shore, they make sure that the GPS positions they've recorded are correct. Uh, what we're coming into a lens and survey mark that's actually stamped with a steel pin driven into the end of the uh, number three wharf here on the port of Napier. And what we're doing is we're going to come in and park up alongside it to uh, validate the accuracy of our own GPS. So it's a way of just certifying that everything we're doing is going to stand up strongly in court. The GPS check confirms the readings they've taken. And now it's time for the team to head for the coast above the fishing grounds. They'll start their surveillance at first light, but before that, there's another uncomfortable night on the cliff tops. All right, we've just reached our observation point on um, Aapanui Station. It's taken us about three and a half hours to to find it. We've actually the last half hour we've been not stumbling in the dark, but um, picking our way down a creek bed in the dark. So it's just into the sleeping bags, and that's us. The next morning it was already light by the time the suspect boat arrived. And the crayfish are going into the orange bin just on the floor to the right of the dicky. 0639, another pot's been retrieved. One, two, three fish retained, four fish retained. Pot reset. Continues to travel towards me, so the detail should improve. 0641, pot has been retrieved, pot's on board, one, one over the side, one retained, two, uh, three retained, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fish retained, time is 701, they're just heading off, craze that they measured are in the orange bins, and they're gone. The surveillance showed that the suspect was mixing up crays from different parts, but the real proof would come later in the day when fishery officers visited the factory the skipper sold to. While things are coming to a head in Napier, down in the Marlborough Sounds, Ministry of Fisheries officers have teamed up with the Navy on board the HMNZS Rotuiti to do checks of recreational fishermen. First left. And the first boat they come across has been mixing the pleasures of diving and fishing. Hey guys, you got any other divers in the water apart from this guy? No. No. Okay. Um, we're from the Ministry of Fisheries, just doing a routine patrol. Have you guys got any fish on board? Yeah. Yep, yep, all right. Um, I'm just going to jump on board and have a look at them, okay? Yep. Yep. As soon as fishery officer Andrew gets on board, he spots a problem an undersized blue cod. So I'm going to have to ask you to take your gear off. We're going to deal with this, and then you can go for a dive, OK? Um, I'll do a quick measure up, but he definitely looks too small to me. Yeah, I mean, he's about 27 centimetres, so he's way too small. Well, how big are they? He's 30. Yep. So we got one, one undersized fish, then. All right. All right, so... Um, do I have to take all my stuff off, or can I just something like this? Um, I'll just have a quick look in the rest of the boat and see what else we got, OK? But the undersized blue cod is only one of the issues on the boat. A bit of burly. Was this... When, when was all this taken? Over the last few days. Over the last few days. So we've got some power. We've got them in the freezer there. Um, yep, yep, we'll, we'll have a look. The presence of power on the boat wouldn't necessarily be a problem, but when you've also got scuba gear on board, it definitely becomes one. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get you guys to take your gear off. We've found um, power meat, power shell on board, and the guys have got scuba gear, and the rules are you can't be in possession of um, scuba gear and also have power. So what's your understanding of the law regarding possession of power and scuba gear? As far as I'm aware, you're only allowed to take uh, power uh, free diving and you're not allowed to uh, use scuba gear to collect them. 
so we you know, did a dive, just snorkel, grab some, grab a few parlour. Uh, today was a dive. We're going to look around the rocks here for craze. But I have heard uh, that uh, you're not supposed to have uh, scuba gear on board. Um, but because it's you know we're on board for such a long, long period of time, I didn't sort of didn't re realise it was going to be just a, a major issue. Okay, I'll try and summarise that. Pass that across to you guys. Um, it's a pretty cut and dry defence. The reason for it is to try and reduce the threat of poaching. They'll probably get a ticket for the um, power and scuba together, and that will be $250 each. In Auckland, the Coast Guard struggling to salvage the boat of the couple they rescued from the Waitemata Harbour, and the almost submerged vessels come to a complete stop in the outgoing tide. See, the thing is, jet boat does not help the tow situation, because no, 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 they're no. just dumping wash on the bow so it won't lift up. The original intention was to get the boat to Half Moon Bay, but this is proving impossible in the conditions, so rescuers decide to head for the nearest beach. So I've spoken to the owner of this vessel. He's going to uplift his trailer from Half Moon Bay and he's going to bring it along to the Marine Parade here on Bucklands Beach and we're going to try to uh, pull the boat up onto his trailer or pull it up onto the beach, drain it out and pump it out and then hopefully put it uh, on the trailer. And once it's on the trailer we might be able to ascertain um, what has happened. Trevor, the owner of the vessel, is on the beach with his trailer by the time the Diodar arrives. But getting his boat out of the water is going to be difficult. Um, yeah. I don't know if we're going to be able to hold this, that's all. This trailer? Yeah, yeah. yeah no, but I'm just saying holding it while we take it off here. Well, no, I'm, you can't let the go from here. It might take off. OK, we'll have a few, have a few guys holding it. It's a real community effort, with people coming off the beach to help with the trailer, and others collecting the flotsam that's come off the back of the boat. No, the tide's got it. No, I'm just let the other guys pull the trailer up. You guys got the boat? Because it's in the tide at the moment. We haven't got enough depth here yet, eh, on that trailer box. Trailer needs to go the full length of the line. It's a real struggle to hold the weight of the boat, and anything that can help gets called into action. OK, we'll just bounce it with our weight in the car. Here it comes. Here it comes. It's getting light, so we're losing water. There we go. Just hold it there, let the water go out of home. Getting the boat ready for the sea had been a three-year labour of love for Trevor and his family, but it was all over in minutes. We were going along quite happily and we just started taking on water. So it looks like we've hauled somehow or a bit of rot in the boat or whatever, I don't know. And it just went down in a big hurry. Yeah, sort of five minutes probably. And yeah, it happened pretty rapidly. Just uh, gave me enough time to do the ship to shore radio, which I couldn't do that anyway, so I grabbed myself in and, and rang the Coast Guard and gave them a rough estimate of where we were. And um, here we are. The we'll go in the office if you like and just park up in there. Down in Napier, Operation John is coming to an end and fishery officers are going through the holding tanks to find the crayfish they put in the pots the previous day. Check this tank. Yeah. These, these are the seeded fish. That bin there is a seeded fish that was found what um, seeded? We, we tagged those fish. Where are they? Where's the tag? Oh, we can't tell you that right now, but we've oh. seeded, we, we've, we tagged that fish so we could identify it. And then those fish were put into, seeded into the customary pots. So we've come here today and now we've found that those fish that were seeded into the customary pots have been, have been declared against, um, have, been, have been recorded as a commercial catch. As, as I see, Jake, you know, I, I've seen you know, okay. I've, I've, but that wasn't the only problem the factory faced. These are undersized fish that were found amongst the commercial catch as well. OK. So um, what Mike's going to do now, we've been through one tank. Um, he's going to go through this tank and, and continue looking for um, tagged fish. OK. What we've actually found is um, 12, 
tagged fish that were seeded into the customary pots. We also found a quantity of undersized fish in the commercial catch, which is disappointing also. So what the guys are going to do now is go through the second tank and also look for seeded fish. A further search revealed more tagged and undersized crayfish and fisheries had all the evidence they needed. He was given fair, and we don't normally do that. We'll say, look, hey, we've got a concern about you fellas, you know, t to the fisher. He was given a fair warning and, like, Kelly gave him a fair warning and when I, and when I came in too, it was like, yeah, you had to know we, were, we had some concerns, eh? And he's just gone, I don't care, you guys will never catch me. And he's completely thumbed his nose at us and you guys. The owners of the companies that held the fishing permit and the factory that distributed the craze were charged along with the skipper of the boat with possessing and selling illegal fish. All pleaded guilty and were fined a total of $12,000 plus costs. In addition, 180 kilograms of craze were sold by fisheries for just over $12,000 and the boat involved in the case was forfeit to the Crown.